Hi right, guys, I'm back. Here's uh, going to be part two. We'll kind of go over some of the stuff I've done and got together. And as soon as I find a pointer, uh -huh. anyway, we've got a power cord wired in, and I've already uh, just powered it up. No, no, no tubes in. Just basically checking. And seeing if we're get if I'm getting what I should be getting out of this transformer on the secondary, and on the both secondaries and everything looks great. The only thing I actually powered up was the dial light. That was the only thing I, that was in the circuit. Got the switch assembly in place. As you can see, it's a takes up most of the underside of the radio. The uh, Oscillator coils in, got it wired up, and uh, been going through just double checking everything, making sure because that everything is soldered. I usually tend to forget at least one solder joint because I get carried away and start wrapping a bunch of components in, then come back and start soldering, and uh, sometimes I forget something. So I've learned to kind of carefully go through and check everything. Now basically, other than running a, another check through here, uh, I'm pretty well, it, well it's, it's actually done underneath. Everything is hooked up. Like I said, I'll run a, another check and make sure an actuality, see right there. One solder joint. It's a ground, and uh, it definitely. <laughs> yeah, we'll heat the soldering iron up. In the meantime, while it's heating up, although it don't take long, I'm gonna talk about the tubes. Now, it's kind of a mixed match of tubes in this. Uh, it's got two, and I'll clean these up later. Right now, just they need to be clean, but it's got two 41s. So they're just a your standard six pin tube. And uh, power pentodes. Got a five pin, it's an 84 rectifier, uh, or 64 is the more modern name for it. Um, for the rectifier in it, and then we the rest of them are populated with uh, Loctols, and uh, here's the 7C6. But the biggest problem with Loctols that causes everybody a lot a lot of headaches is now I did go through and that's no guarantee, but I did go through and uh, clean. The tube sockets, uh, basically, I hope I find them. Uh, basically, just uh, use something like this. These are they're uh, tip cleaners for uh, selling torches and propane torches and and stuff um, just for cleaning out your tips and stuff you you can usually get them pretty cheap and of course they're various different sizes pick what size will fit in your tightly into your socket and then you just up and down in and out to get it to, you know a couple times and it generally will shine them up pretty good uh, the bigger sockets you can use those. I usually like using uh, uh, pipe cleaners with uh, alcohol or or some sort of uh, uh, you know cleaning fluid on it, something that'll evaporate quickly and uh, clean those. Now on these, and I don't know if you can see, 
the pins are rather dark and they're corroded and stuff and generally uh, I just take a uh, basically all these are a point file you can buy them at any automotive store and I'll just go around the outside first and just keep working your way around until it shines up and then I'll do the go in between them and catch the uh, the insides it's not perfect uh, you can't get all sides exactly but then you can just kind of go like this and just work your way around you don't want to take off too much these are uh, tinted with tinning on them and so you don't want to go through that it's fairly thick but still basically all you're looking for is to shine them up and then you know just keep working your way around till you're pretty satisfied that you've pretty much got um, as much of the pin as you can now you can use something out you can use sandpaper you can use emery board uh, any number of things but you just keep doing it and they'll, they'll start shining up pretty decently um, you know and then just start going along on around the other way just to kind of catch as many of the sides as you can uh, if you don't clean them up these are notorious for causing all kinds of headaches uh, intermittence like crazy and you kind of wiggle the socket a little bit or the tube a little bit and it comes and it goes uh, you know sometimes you almost have to halfway lift them up to get them to work uh, in other words kind of almost pull them out of the socket so uh, they're just really bad about doing it and especially the Philco ones now some of the other brands uh, I think it's Sylvania the pins are actually longer and they seem not to I don't really think it has much to do with the pins although the, the Philco ones don't stick very far into the socket I think just about right in here somewhere so you get a little extra pin although it really shouldn't make any difference but for some reason theirs don't give as much trouble I think it's Sylvania maybe RCA but I'm pretty sure it's Sylvania uh, they don't seem to be quite as bad as the Philco branded so anyway I'll do all those up and and get those in I've got some more work you know I've been uh, slowly getting stuff put on the top side of course you know the IF cans are in place um, we have put or I put the uh, cover over the transformer I I tried shining this up I hit a little bit on this side which is already uh, somewhat shiny but it just from heat and everything and age it's pretty much dulled down to something like this whatever coating they had on it and I thought it crossed my mind of painting it and I thought uh, against it I just didn't think it looked right now I uh, still got to clean up these two cans you know kind of shine them up and clean up as well as the out outside basically I'm just going to kind of clean these two since the uh, lettering on them is really um, decent I don't know if you can pick up on that it's got really decent lettering on it so I don't really want to severely polish them and lose the lettering and, but I will kind of clean more or less clean them up than anything uh, a lot of times I've learned with experience that you can do initial polishing 
you know, without the cans on, you know, same way with the uh, cap, you know, the can condensers and stuff. But the process of putting them on and getting them bolted down, then moving the chassis around, getting everything hooked up and everything, it's bad enough that the chassis don't look as shiny. I, I think once I kind of polish it again, it'll shine up but it's had a lot of fingerprints on it by now the same thing happens to these so I've kind of gotten where I may do initial if they're really bad do initial cleaning and maybe even a little bit of a polish but not get real carried away until the last point and then do a final polishing before I put the tubes in or pull the tubes back out and whatever um, because otherwise you just you just get fingerprints you get everything on them and it, it just you, you're constantly repolishing them and uh, see don't know if I can get in there and if you can see it but I've got a ground strap yet to hook on right here and then the tuning condenser will be fully hooked up it's got has two ground straps as typical there's one it bolts down to the chassis and comes up and bolts on one of the bolts going through and then it has that one to solder it in. And of course, uh, put the string, dial string back on and the dial and all that. Now this came with uh, the push button plastics. The, I'm sure you've seen at least some videos on those and some uh, information about those on other sites. But they're the ones that are kind of a, a reddish color. But when the light hits them, they, they glow a little bit. They allow some light through. So they're, you know, they're opaque, but they're not like totally blocking the light like a solid color. So, uh, of course, they deteriorate like crazy. The fact, the original ones. So I've got it order a set to put on here. The nice thing about it, they're not near as expensive as that one RCA. They're a lot cheaper. That's the only thing I really need to buy for it is just those. I got all the knobs. Everything else is with it. So, but that's where we're at on the radio. It just stands now. Uh, Something I wanted to talk about. Yeah, we have plenty of time. On this radio is how the push pull works here. Uh, of course, obviously, you didn't see anything on top or bottom. There's only one audio transformer, it's the output transformer. There's no inner stage. And when you look at the schematic, there is no uh, phase shift phase changer tube or anything so it basically it's using resistors uh, resistor coupling and using that to actually um, phase change so that one tube is going say one is going positive on the output the other tube is going negative and I thought I wanted to talk about that just a little bit how it works so I, I kind of drew it up on the uh, whiteboard and kind of going to go through it and show you what happens now. Uh, <coughs> basically drew this circuit as it is. This right here, the incoming point of one capacitor is this guy right here. So it, it's just the signal coming from the first audio, the 7C6. So I didn't think we needed to draw it in. Uh, the this minus 14 volts is derived from coming down here at that voltage divider circuit that's tied to the uh, center tap of the transformer. So it, as the current goes through here, there is a, you know you get a drop voltage drop, and since it's pulling it up from ground it's a negative voltage so right here is uh, it's supposed to be around minus 14 uh, without checking it it's probably pretty close to that because uh, the resistors are pretty well dead on 
and then of course uh, B plus and and B plus here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we have the two B pluses. They go they go in the same place. Just comes down and hooks right here and around down, coming in out of the final filter. It's full B plus coming up. They attach together right here. One goes this way, and that one goes this way. This one going here is this guy, and this one come this way to the transformer is this guy. So now that we established that, we're going to look at what happens to the signal, and I'm going to take it in one direction so it makes it look a little easier. But we have a a, a signal coming in. To the 0.01 microfarad. Of course, all this is just a blocker, you know, because on this side you have plate voltage DC, so you know, standard coupling. But as this signal is going negative in this direction, it goes through into the grid, straight into this grid here, and as it's going negative, it starts reducing the current going through the tube which reduces the drop over here which allows more B plus to go through so this starts going positive. At the same time so is the screen. Because remember on tubes everything is in relation to the cathode. The cathode is our main guy it's what's giving us electrons, the current. So everything else is affected by the cathode and what it's doing. So when that control grid slows down the electrons here, then the current here and here both reduce. And being that this is connected to a load resistor to B plus, it changes the drop because the current going through here changes. It changes the drop on that. So allows it to go B plus or go positive. Now, so that's going positive. So that goes through, and all this is here for is another just like this guy. It's a blocker, just blocking DC. We've got B plus over here to the tune of about 170 volts uh, with no signal. So you know we got to block it, we just want the signal to come through. So as that's going positive, so is it going positive here. Same signal, positive here. And if that goes positive, then we have the reverse relationship as this grid becomes more positive, more current flows through, more current flows through, more drop on this part of the transformer, and this ends up, the plate uh, goes negative. So, as the signal keeps working its way through, you know, you'll end up with a sign. And this will go like this, and this will go like this. And, of course, this one will go like this, and this will go like this. But it allows them to be out of phase, and it's just a simple little trick. There's other ways of doing it, but it's a simple little trick of uh, making use of the screen current as our driving force to here. And we can do that. It's, you notice it's actually just pretty much directly coupled. That's because the screen current is like a third of the plate current. So um, generally these plates are looking, each plate is looking for around 9,000 uh, ohm impedance load that's here. Well, you notice the screens are running on 3900, about one third. That's because the current's one third. So the voltage here will be less right here. And it's going to equal out, and everything was sized, resistors were sized. They put this one meg in here. Even though some of the signal may want to go this way, 
one meg versus nothing it's not going to go that way but this signal and this signal will be pretty well equal in uh, amplitude but by making use of the screen and feeding it back in to this grid we get the out of phase on each of the output tubes. Now another way of doing it and a more popular way or at least some other way of doing it is you actually pull uh, tap off of the plate of one of the tubes and go through a resistor divider and feed that into the grid. Use you size resistors so you can keep the signal going in this grid here to be about equal to this one here so that the two are equal. But I thought I'd just kind of go over that and show how that uh, uh, works and on this particular radio uh, so you kind of have an idea and uh, so anyway that's where pretty much where I'm at. I'm probably going to end this video here. Uh, we're at 21 minutes and uh, call it part two and the next time you see it I should have the tubes populated and pretty much everything done on the up, upper side and maybe we can get a, a power up done on the, on the next video. If not we'll just go where we're at or whatever. And if we're lucky, it doesn't work, so we can at least troubleshoot. Uh, you never know. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for your comments, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.